I'm just going to use this stick here so that I can stabilize my hand while I paint some of these uh, in more detailed areas. Trying to uh, just add a little bit of depth to the, uh, to the feathers here. Create some more form. I think it'll be important. I'm going to show the roundedness. Am I from Scotland? Uh, no, I'm from originally from uh, North Yorkshire in England. But uh, thank you. This color here is ultramarine blue. It's a, it's a transparent color, so it's really nice for doing detailed work after the fact, and glazing and so on. Putting these little stripes in here at the bottom of the feathers. So this painting is destined to go to Australia in the new year. It'll be going to a gallery called 19 Karen. 19 Karen's been uh, representing me for a number of years now. Uh, one of the galleries that represents my work. And, um, yeah, the other one is in Montreal. I should have a solo show on right now in Montreal at Gallery Yoon. Uh, and that's it for my oil painting. I also uh, uh, show some digital work, some photography. And, uh, I have a show on right now in New York City, if you're interested. It, uh, it's called Treat, Treat Gallery in uh, Brooklyn. So if you are uh, interested in that, you can check out my website, along with links to a lot of other things related to my art and art practice, including uh, prints. I do sell prints. I have 35 of my paintings available in print form you are uh, interested in getting some of my art on your walls and uh, want to do it in the most affordable way possible, then uh, yeah, certainly point, point you toward my prints. Painting mostly, I'm going to be painting this large o orata flower. This is uh, all of the flora and fauna in this painting are native to Australia, and that was simply a stylistic choice because I'm uh, going to be showing this painting in Australia.
who's watching my tutorial on how to draw a hand. Thank you. It was inspirational. Um, thank you very much for saying that. Um, yeah, I have uh, two more tutorials for how to draw a hand um, coming out this week. There's one that's a fist like this position. And then uh, I'm also doing like a you know, rocker kind of thing. Um, so those will both come out th this week. Um, one tomorrow and then the next one on Saturday. And then the following week is all how to draw Christmas themed things. So we'll, uh, and then we'll kind of return to the regular things, human anatomy and um, animals and things like that. I seem to be the most common how to draws, but uh, yeah, thank you for, for saying that. I'm glad you got some value out of that. Okay, so I'm just gonna move now to this uh, orata flower, which is this large one here, and um, this one here. This is uh, native to Australia. So I'm just going to get some cadmium red. Oh, thanks very much, Scott. Appreciate that. Appreciate the well wishes. here and um, just start adding some of this red this is largely a magenta flower right now but I'd uh, like to make it a little bit of both I think So this is actually not a, a parrot, it's it's a lorikeet, which is a bird native to Australia. But, uh, certainly an easy choice for me once I saw it. I knew I wanted to paint it. It was, uh, as you can see, really vibrant and colorful. Just a beautiful bird. I'm going to keep this uh, cadmium red toward the bottom. I have more of the magentas at the top. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, if any of you are interested in my art, uh, I do have uh, a bunch of prints that I've put in my shop now. And uh, so 25 bucks uh, for the small ones, and then for big prints, uh, 40 bucks. So, you know, hopefully that's affordable as the holidays approach. But if you, uh, if you would like one of my prints, um, you can just click the link in my bio, my TikTok bio, or just go to markliamsmith.com. And uh, I should have something there for nearly everyone. Um, 35, something like that, 35 different uh, paintings in, uh, in print form, uh, if you're interested.
thanks very much, Pennywise. I think I will uh, paint this table next. That'll probably be a good idea. Okay, I'm just going to switch brushes now, something a little larger, not, not too large. I still want to be able to kind of get between these flowers. Um, so this table here, I will lower the tripod. This table here, um, it's going to go with something like black and brown mixed together, make it a dark brown. I still I still have a lot of a lot of black left on my palette. So it's just a case of adding some brown. I'm gonna be adding in this case the brown and uh, what that I'll be adding is raw sienna. Um, so this this particular one is an old Holland product. Uh, old Holland's quite a good oil paint to use if you're out there shopping for oil paint um, you're not gonna go too uh, too wrong with Old Holland. They, uh, their paint is just pigment and binder. By binder, I mean the oil. Uh, in, in the case of, of this particular paint, it's uh, the binder is linseed oil. But what it, crucially, what it doesn't have is uh, something called filler. And some uh, some oil paint manufacturers put filler in their oil paint, such as uh, chalk or talc or calcium carbonate. So you uh, you do have to watch out if you're buying uh, student grade paint or or one of the uh, cheaper professional brand paints. It might seem like you're getting a great deal. But that's not necessarily the case if your tube is full of filler. You may not be getting the deal you think you're getting. And to my knowledge, there are only two oil, oil paint companies that use no fillers whatsoever. And that's Old Holland and Michael Harding. Um, some, some filler is necessary. It actually brings out the... Uh, luminosity um, especially in some some pigments but uh, like some transparent pigments like dioxazine purple a little bit of filler especially if it was a chalk or a calcium carbonate would uh, almost act like a tinting agent and give that uh, give that paint a, almost like a fluorescent appearance you, we usually see that with the uh, more transparent paints. So I'm just going to paint this whole thing, this whole side of the table here, the same color. And then I'll worry about the shadows in a moment. I'm not going to worry about the shadows immediately. Jackie, hello. Thank you. 
yeah, thank you everyone for uh, following and joining. And, uh, whether you're here, you came here for the uh, from the drawing tutorials or from the painting tutorials, um, welcome. Yeah, how's it going, Pat? Um, yeah, I'm. Uh, so I'm painting from Canada, um, Eastern Canada. Well, it's kind of Central Eastern. I'm from. A, I'm currently in a little town just outside of Toronto, called Oakville. So we're right on Lake Ontario. And where I am in the world, it is 6.45 p.m. You'll be famous if you're not already. <laughs> Thank you. Just, just take my time. Practice every time I do a painting. That's I'm practicing and training for the next ones. So, painting's pretty cool that way. There's no age limit. You see people starting to paint in their 80s. A very famously, a painter named Grandma Moses. Very famously started in her 80s and painted for 20 years. So, yeah, you are never too late to start. If you're interested in painting, um, yeah, just start. It's, it's that time of the year. Time of uh, renewal and refreshing commitments and resolutions. If uh, this is, if 2022 is your year to be creative, start a new hobby, and you're thinking about painting, why not go for it? Make the plunge, take the plunge. I have a number of uh, YouTube videos that talk about brushes and supports like canvases, and linen, and so on. Uh, I talk about color theory and painting application scumbling, glazing. So if you are interested in painting for the first time, if you're brand new to painting, uh, then let me recommend my Couch to Easel series on, uh, on YouTube. Tropical Budgie, uh, yeah, kind of. It's a lorikeet, which is a Australian bird. All of the um, elements in this piece are Australian okay, because this painting is going to my Australian gallery uh, 19 Karen much easier to paint um, along the edge of your outside edge of your brush.
I'm using an angled brush right now, but I really should be using a flat brush. I just happened to have it on hand and I grabbed it, but uh, I like flat brushes better because you can load the brush from both sides equally. Whereas the angled brush, you, uh, you can take care of details in a much more efficient way, uh, but you can only operate from one side at a time. You have to really pay attention to how your brush is loaded. I was just starting the red flower. Oh yeah. Uh, well, I, I took quite a break actually. I um, I went to Montreal for a week and uh, hung out there for. I had my uh, my show, my oil, my solo show, and so we went up. My my wife and son, we all went up a little early and uh, visited with friends and just kind of hung out in Montreal, which is. A really cool place to hang out this time of year. So, typically, a painting like this would probably take me two and a half weeks or something like that. But uh, yeah, I'm about a week behind because of that trip. I mean, there's no real rush. It's it's going to uh, it's going to Australia fairly soon. that straight line in now. Okay, let's flip it back that way. Uh, well, you can paint like this. There's nothing stopping you. It's just a matter of uh, practicing. some shadows in now. So we're just going to assume that it's a kind of a general It's going to assume a you know, like a general shadow pattern so because it's it's pretty central lighting anyway. So something like this. This is just black mixed with uh, that raw sienna, which is a brown. Okay, now whatever color I've done here on the side, the front has to be even lighter than that. And that's just because the front uh, will be receiving more direct light, whether it's an indoor scene or an outdoor scene. It's uh, a flat table always receives more light. This will mostly be in shadow. I'll end up painting over this in a moment. But I'm just kind of getting the base down here. And that's probably a little bit darker than I would like, so I'll go to the next level of lightness. So how light or how dark something is in painting is called value. So you might hear some painters refer to it as tone. Um, that's, it's one of those, to say tone, it's one of those things that's technically wrong, but since everyone says it, you kind of have to know what it also means. But um, value is how light or dark something is. If you were to look at that color on a gray scale, if you were to think about the color as an achromatic gray, then you would have the color's value. Now, uh, for, for the people that say tone, well, what tone is, 
is uh, the term used to add gray to a color. And that's one of three terms that uh, are related. The other is tinting. And when you tint a color, you add white to it. And, uh, and then the other one is shading. If you shade a color, you add black to it. So tinting, shading, and toning colors are all about adding gray, white, and black. Tinting is adding white, toning is adding gray, and shading is adding black. And you would typically do that to bring down the chroma or the vibrancy. There are a lot of things in real life, if you're, especially if you're trying to do a realistic portrayal of something like a portrait or a landscape. Um, if you're trying to do something realistic, you probably will want to bring down the uh, chroma, how vibrant something is, how saturated the color is. If you're interested in color theory, I, uh, I'll point you toward Munsell. Uh, plenty of videos of his on YouTube. Uh, Munsell's color system is really good. Talks about the three dimensions of color, including value, hue, and chroma. And also shows how those three dimensions interact with each other. Let's tilt this down a little bit more so the uh, painting is not obscured by the comments. beautiful. Oh, thank you very much. Okay, I'm going to go to a smaller brush now to uh, deal with these little areas. It's the same color still. This is just that uh, black mixed with brown. a little bit of white to that mix now and uh, I'm using it on, on the very edge of this table here
this one. And then since I've done a highlight, I also have to do a darker area. Lucas, thank you so much for the target. Appreciate it. Um, yeah, so, and I think what we're gonna do now is uh, a wooden texture. So, I have a little trick for that. Let me uh, let me show you how I do that. So, I have a nail that I have taped to a paintbrush. And so you see, it's just a regular nail. And then I'm going to scratch the, um, oh, let's see if I can get a closer view here. I'm going to scratch the, uh, the nail on this wooden part. You don't need to press too hard. Um, now I do have, I am painting on panel. If you are painting on canvas, you can still use this technique, but you will have to be very careful. But uh, basically, and then, and then what you wanna do is think about the grain of the wood. Obviously different kinds of wood have different kinds of grain, but you know, they can generally get away with a kind of a swirl. And I would recommend uh, freehanding this. Don't use a ruler. The ruler will offer straight lines and you don't want that. You want some more organic, more natural looking lines. And uh, just the motion. That you bring naturally will will be really good for that. This is a crack I have to remember not to scratch over that crack there. So this is uh, a, a way that will save you a lot of time when next time you paint wood. It's, it's a little difficult to see. I think it is. But uh, anyway, there, the difference is subtle, but it is there. I think maybe one if I showed you the there can you see like that it's just these little details that you can't really see from a foot away but if you get if you get right up close if you get six inches away you'll see these little details almost like an Easter egg that way You can see that I've done the whole piece of wood here in just a few minutes. So it's a pretty good time investment too. It's kind of 
of scratched in there. Now I can go over again later on with uh, a, a light glaze, like a, a zinc white mixed with raw umber, something along those lines. And that glaze will fall in the grooves. So that would be pretty cool. This is the same technique that I use to uh, paint fur, actually. It's a really handy especially if you have a small animal. And, uh, I did finished a large painting for my solo show in Montreal, and uh, I had a mouse in that, in that, uh, in, my, in my largest painting. And I painted the fur of the mouse, and then I scratched the fur back into it, just like this. So that's the uh, that's the nail technique. There you go. I made the video look too easy. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, I have I have two more hand, how to draw hand videos coming up. Um, I'll be posting one tomorrow. Uh, and then the next one's Saturday, and they're both how to draw hands. One is a pose like this, kind of a straight punch, and then the other one is doing this uh, kind of rocker thing. So I'll post both of, both of them. Um, yeah, Thursday and Saturday. And then I'm going to take a break from the hand tutorials and move into... Maybe more Christmas related themes. Um, yeah. Something kind of Christmassy. I've already done a snowman and Rudolph. So, and we'll see what else I can do. Let's bring the uh, tripod over here now. Paint some some wooden texture into the wood here, taking advantage of all the texture that I've just scratched in. You can just kind of. Follow the line of those textures. It's really important if you have something like wood or maybe striped clothing, something along those lines, that your brush strokes follow the direction of the stripes or the grain of the wood as it is. I want to paint against the grain. Okay, now I'm going to put some shadows into the top of the table.
here there'll be another shadow. Get it quite dark over here. It wouldn't be very much light at all. Make those edges a little softer. I don't want such a hard edge. I want a softer shadow. Just there. Is this inspired by a certain country? Yes. Yeah, um, so this painting is going to a art gallery in Australia called 19 Karen, and uh, they have represented me for a number of years, uh, one of the galleries that represents me. And um, so all of the flowers and, and this bird, this lorikeet it's called, um, they're all from Australia. Everything in this painting is Australian. shadows in now. going to darken some of these uh, plants here beside this green wing just to separate the wing from the plants quite important Just adding some green to this red. Green and red are natural complements. So that means they typically don't go well together. They uh, annihilate each other. Like matter and antimatter.
Thanks, Emma. Let's see if I have any more yellow. I'm going to add some of this yellow here. This is called Cadmium Yellow Lemon. And uh, again, this is a paint manufacturer called Old Holland. And the Old Holland's been around for a very, very long time. I think they started manufacturing paint in the 1700s. And uh, they really know what they're doing. So extremely high quality paint with um, a very high pigment load. So it means it has a lot of pigment in it. There are no fillers. And uh, the binder is um, a very high quality linseed oil. So if you, uh, with the holidays just around the corner, if you want to ask, if you're a painter and you want to ask family and, or friends if they, uh, if, if they want to buy you something for, for the holidays, Old Holland paint is a fantastic choice. Um, the other one that I would recommend highly is this brand, which is Michael Harding. This brand's out of the UK. And again, these are all um, handmade, small batch, extremely high pigment load, uh, excellent linseed oil. It's cold pressed, refined linseed oil. And um, there's no filler like talc or calcium carbonate or wax. Uh, Michael Harding and Old Holland are easily the best two oil paints available. Much better than any other brand you may have heard of. Like like uh, Williamsburg or Windsor Newton or Chavin. Oh, the, uh, the Couch to Easel series? Yeah, so I have... Um, so it's... I have uh, one for brushes. I have one for supports, like paper. Um, so yeah, so one's called brushes, one's called supports. One is called um, oil paint, like what's inside oil paint and what to look for. I give recommendations for a professional versus student, for natural or synthetic. And then I talk about, um, I have other videos on paint application. So um, yeah, they're, they're all there. Mark Liam Smith is my YouTube name. Hey, thanks so much, Pat, for sharing the lives. Thank you, everyone, for tapping that screen and uh, for the shares. So I'm just going to add, now that we have some of that cadmium yellow lemon, I'm going to Add some it over here. Just painting the bottom side of the feathers to give the appearance that they're underneath. It's like an optical illusion. color so this is that cadmium yellow lemon I'm 
just using it as a highlight color here. This is a semi-opaque color. I've watered it down slightly so it's currently presenting as semi-transparent uh, which is fine because a lot of these oranges and reds underneath will come through. Now typically I, I, I would avoid cadmium yellow lemon with oranges uh, just because cadmium yellow lemon is a cool yellow oranges obviously are warm but uh, I've uh, it's thinned out so much that it's not that big of a deal it's not going to present any serious problems anyway gypsy 18 hello oh thanks so much everyone I don't want to cover up all my old work, but just the edges of these feathers is going to really bring out a lot of the uh, form. And it's starting to get that feathered look now. Use many bright, intense colors. I feel when they try, they get all muddy. Um, yeah, so, so to that point, um, so first of all, thank you. Um, what, a really good way to avoid them getting muddy is to just mix your bright, intense colors that are warm with warm and then cool with cool and, uh, and keep them separated and then once they've dried then you can paint on top of warm areas with cool colors or cool areas with with warm colors but the only way pe colors get muddy is if you're mixing warm and cool so if you can avoid that you'll avoid muddy colors If you're mixing analogous colors, so colors on the same side of the color wheel, then uh, they don't they don't get muddy. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, so it's important to um, you know, when you're when you're mixing warm and cool colors, remember that there are warm reds and cool reds, but all reds are warm. 
So when we when you say something like a cool red, what you mean is it's a red with purple in it, which is, sorry, well, that's a warm red. Oh, so, oh no, I sorry, I got that wrong again. I was right the first time. A a, a warm red is a, is a red with orange, and a cool red is a red with purple. So. Uh, but all reds are warm. It's just relatively speaking. And then same thing with um, yellows. Yellows are kind of weird because they're right on the they're right on that dividing line between warm and cool. So if the yellow has green in it, it's cool, and if it has red in it, orange, then it's warm. So cadmium yellow lemon is cool, and uh, cadmium yellow medium is warm. Naples yellow is warm. You don't have to guess at those things either. They're all available online. You can just check them out. I'm going to add some more yellow to the green of the feathers now. Yeah, Richard, hello. Why is he talking so light? He has a three-year-old that's about to go to bed and he doesn't want to disturb his three-year-old. Yeah, for sure. Kids first, heart second. This is cadmium yellow. Lemon. There are lots of different cadmium yellows. There's cadmium yellow light, cadmium yellow medium, cadmium yellow deep. But this is cadmium yellow lemon, which is somewhere between cadmium yellow and cadmium yellow green. Oh, sorry, cadmium green. So it's it's still a yellow, but it's on the cool side. But, um, it's a really nice yellow. If you if you need a highlight for green, it is opaque, but that's fine. You can dilute it with a little bit of linseed oil, which is what I've done here. That's why you're still seeing some of the green from the previous layers come through. All right, that's why I always prefer opaque paint. Because you can dilute it, make it transparent or semi-transparent. But you can't go the other way. something else down this side here too.
looks good for that section. There's some more uh, detail that needs to be put into this flower here. I'm just going to start that now. Lots of pinks, whites and pinks. Yeah, if you learned um, watercolor first, then here you'll find water, you'll find oil color very easy because I think watercolor is much harder. It's much less forgiving. Um, you're just whack of color theory. Yeah, well, it just takes some practice. Like, I didn't really have a choice because I'm colorblind. I have to, I have to study color theory. I couldn't just rely on my intuition like a lot of people do. They just focus on their intuition, what feels nice to them. Um, I didn't have that luxury because of the color blindness. So I kind of had to study, take notes, record my mixes, and do lots of different things to try to give myself well, not an advantage, but maybe some kind of uh, mechanism to help help level the way I see or understood paint. That's a pretty dog, your painting. So this uh, lower Kate and all of the plants in this painting are native to Australia. This painting will be going to Australia to be uh, shown in a gallery called 19 Karen, which is one of the galleries that represents my work. Also be darkening the dark areas. Looks like my three-year-old's here to say good night. Hello. Hello, Daddy. Hi, how are you? I'm well. I say hi and good night to other people.
go? Yes, you may. Had a real. <laughs> yeah, he's sweet. He had a real leap in uh, the week we were in Montreal, cognitively. So he was exposed to a lot more French than uh, than he gets here in Ontario. I'm just, uh, this is just that black, um, uh, mixed it with black and brown mix and mixed it with, um, cadmium red. I'm just going over the base of these stems here. Getting them a little bit darker. Just going over areas that could use a little bit of depth. So yeah, coming to a close on this one. I'm gonna have to start the uh, the next one. I don't yet have it mocked up, but it'll be the same idea. It'll be uh, Australian flowers and. An Australian bird as well. I have that same color, but now I'm adding some titanium white to it. And, uh, I'm going to use it as a highlight color. Some of the parts of the flower that are receiving the most direct sun sunlight. And just some highlight colors here. Increase the form. Give it a little more depth. I painted this plant 
before I painted uh, three of them. A warata plant. And, um, I painted three in a single painting that had a skull in it. And um, that I sent that painting down to the Australian gallery. It ended up being bought by the uh, gallery director herself. So I'm uh, in the fortunate position to paint another one. Can I do a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to draw a frog? Yeah, for sure. I really like uh, drawing frogs. I painted one in uh, my, my last series of paintings that I did. And uh, I enjoyed it very much. So, yeah, I can certainly do that. I'd be happy to. So I tend to um, prepare my regular TikTok posts um, in advance. So um, this week... Um, so I, I post every two days on TikTok. Um, this week, the we post uh, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. So tomorrow's post is a uh, is how to draw a fist. Oh, sorry, that Saturday is how to draw a fist like that. Tomorrow's is how to do the kind of rock, how to draw that sign. And and then next week is Christmas related themes. So after Christmas, I can do the frog. So tend to be really busy around this time of year. So it's always better to get all my TikToks done. I try to get them all done on one day and then just let them sit in the drafts. It makes them, seems to make the most sense in terms of workflow. Page, is there a particular kind of frog? Because I was just thinking, you know, there are lots of different sizes and shapes of frog. I would probably do something like a, you know, like a colorful tree frog, something like that. Were you thinking more of a chubby toad kind of a frog or um, like one of those little colorful tree frogs? I mean, I can do both, I guess. be easy to draw yeah yeah um gingerbread man would be pretty good yeah i'm gonna be doing christmas related things so 
Uh, I already have a snowman and a Rudolph. Um, I think I'll probably do how to draw Santa. Um, I have like a, a time lapse Santa, but I'll probably do how to draw Santa. Oh, something like that. Where do I got my brushes? Mostly I get my uh, brushes from the art store. This, uh, these ones here are, you know, they're not, they're, they're fairly inexpensive. I think you get 15 brushes for $20 and, um, they hold their shape reasonably well and they don't shed. So that's nice. And, um, the brand is Royal and Langnickel. They're not very, you know, this is not a brush that you're going to last a lifetime, but it'll last three or four paintings. And then these little ones here. Um, I bought um, I bought these ones on Amazon, and uh, they're called Meden. M e e d e n. I don't know if it's focusing on on that or not, but uh, it's a series of small small brushes, so they're pretty cool. Um, yeah, thanks very much. Uh, this is an oil painting. <laughs> yeah, these were pretty good. Um, there were 15 of them, and they're all different. You know, there's some round brushes, some angle brushes. Um, I think the biggest one was a four. But most of them are in that zero, double zero, triple zero range. So yeah, it was, you know, and they they all have the same kind of handle. There's three right here. So this this is a I mean this brush is blown out now. I did I just finished a show um, that's now hanging in in uh, Montreal. But that's number four round. That's a zero uh, bright bright black bright is the same as flat. They're just uh, the bristles aren't as long. If uh, anyone's new to painting, by the way, and you wonder why you would use a certain size brush or a certain shape brush over over a different one, um, I do have a YouTube video that specifically deals with that. So, uh, yeah, if you just check out my YouTube channel and uh, and click on on brushes, um, you'll see that video where I talk about. The difference between a bright and a filbert and an angled brush and a flat and a round and a fan brush and so on and tell you when to use them and why you'd want to use them when you use them so, and um, yeah there are lots obviously lots of other things uh, on that youtube channel if you're interested in getting to to uh, paint more Increase your painting knowledge. You know, YouTube is such a wonderful resource. And it's free. You love art projects, especially pottery? Yeah, pottery is really cool. I haven't done that since uh, university. But uh, pottery is really neat. Yeah, drawing is important. Drawing and sketching are important. Uh, thank you, Joey Folk. Much appreciated.
Yeah, Charles. My YouTube channel is Mark Liam Smith. It's the same as my TikTok name. Um, in fact, all of my social media is Mark Liam Smith. You can go to uh, Mark Liam Smith for Facebook, Twitter, uh, YouTube, TikTok, etc. Uh, MarkLiamSmith.com is where you'll find prints. I'm selling prints now. I have 35 different paintings on there uh, in print form. And, uh, you know, I try to keep them reasonably affordable. They start at $25 for prints. So if you're interested in acquiring a print from, of uh, a print of any of the paintings that I had in my show that I just hung last week. Actually, I just got back from Montreal last week. This past weekend, I was in Montreal at my reception. Um, there's some photos of it on my Instagram if you're interested in, in it. Yeah, paint by numbers, no joke, for sure. Paint by numbers is a important step in learning. Painting a little bit of a shadow in on this leaf here and here. Do I prefer to paint on wood or canvas? Um, I prefer to paint on wood, but um, if I'm painting a, a quite a large canvas, a large painting, then I will paint on canvas. I guess uh, if I have to roll it up to ship it somewhere, then uh, that's always a good option to have in your back pocket. But uh, no, I do prefer to paint on wood. It's much smoother. I found myself gessoing the canvas again and again and again and just trying to create a very smooth texture but um, yeah, I prefer I prefer panel now wooden panel I'm just gonna add a few dots to the insides of these flowers And then some lighter dots too. Just found your page, you're awesome bro. Oh, thank you very much, appreciate that. What's the coolest thing you've ever painted? Um, I painted, um, it was on my favorite painting in Canada's National Gallery is a painting by Gustav Klimt called Hope Two, And uh, it's, it's a naked pregnant woman standing in uh, sideways. You see her pregnant uh, stomach. And then behind her, you have um, death and pestilence and old age and um, and this kind of weird creature, and then all of the regular Klimt um, abstractions. So and so, I painted that painting, a, a reproduction of it, 
But in front of that painting, in the painting, I painted my pregnant wife uh, when she was pregnant with my, my three-year-old. Now, so, um, and then she's facing the opposite direction from the side. So, my, it's my favorite painting, and then my wife in front of it. That's probably my, that's probably the coolest thing I've painted. What medium am I using to paint? I'm using oil paint and linseed oil. Thank you. Love that is so pretty. Thank you. I appreciate that. I'm just gonna work on his claws a little bit now. See, they could be slightly larger. And darker. to highlight down the claw here on this one when you're trying to show something to be shiny the best way to do that is to have very dark darks and very light lights and have the transition between the dark and the light be very abrupt if the transitions between dark and light are not abrupt then the object will appear matte so, I'm just going to put some shadow in now. I'm 
when I put my finger on the painting like that, what I'm doing is softening the edges in a really uh, kind of quick and easy way. And uh, you can do it with a paintbrush if you like, if you want to be a little more precise, but it's, it's the same outcome. But, uh, you get nice soft edges when you just smudge them slightly with your finger. Obviously, you have to be very careful about what paints you're doing it with. Anything that's cobalt or chromium oxide or cadmium um, are slightly toxic, so you don't want to be putting your fingers in into those paints. But um, anything else, you should be okay. Make sure you read the toxicity reports. Don't take my word for it. Okay, I think that's going to be it for this evening. I'll just pull back. Um, so what we have next, I'm going to have to redo the background here. And uh, just because it's a little too streaky right now for my liking. But um, I don't know, I might, I might go back in and touch up some details, but it's pretty much in a place where I'd be happy to leave it other than the background obviously you can see some things there on the background but um yeah that's gonna that's gonna be it for this session thank you all so much uh if you are interested in prints please do go to my website markliamsmith.com there's a link in the bio and uh, i have two shows on right now and so i have a lot of work available if you're interested in grabbing an original oil painting um then then uh, that's on my website, Gallery Yoon in Montreal. I also have a show on in New York right now for digital uh, photographs. You can check those out also through my website. That's Treat Gallery. But uh, okay, that's going to be it. Thank you all so very much. It has been, as always, my pleasure. Bye-bye.